Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonky, and we're going to be doing a podcast today of going over all the updates of 2014. Got a couple guests with me here. We have Fat Nublet, aka Nat Fublet. Hey. And uh, Lee, aka Regicidal. Hey everyone, what's up? So I guess we're just going to go ahead and go month by month through 2014 and talk about what we thought of the updates, if they're any good or if they're terrible. Or any of that. And also the backing footage is just me at Bandos. Because try not bunk crush here. <laughs> so yeah, the first thing that happened in 2014 was other than Solomon updates, I guess the first major thing was Haiti and Skull returned. And we got bonus XP. Also player on ports. And the player on ports update. Yeah, that was pretty good. And that gave us what the uh, Koi scales and the pearls. Yep, and that gave us the cape and the ring the reef walker cape which was incredibly overpowered at release for the first few minutes yeah <laughs> cuz it had like 250 armor or something ridiculous yep. way more than any cape in the game which also brought the red cape glitch thing with the what was it the fremina cape where if it was a red cape you'd be able to get the 250 bonus <laughs> i think it had like a 50% block chance on that cape yeah yep it was crazy. There's people that were doing QBD in that cape and nothing else, and they're completely fine. <laughs> yep. That was crazy. I don't know if anyone got banned over that, but that was one of the weirder glitches of the year, definitely. Yeah, I don't think anyone did. And then, I don't know, like, how long did it take you guys to max out your ports after that update came out? I'm still not maxed. <laughs> I think two to three months. I don't I did it nonstop, and I did it every hour when I could, so I think it was about two and a half months. That's really crazy. So I guess, like... The voyages are going to increase exponentially and get longer and longer. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming so. I don't want it to be like that, but I'm assuming it's going to be like that, yeah. Because we're going to get another ports update here pretty soon. Week yeah. long. In the next year. So that might take like six months to max out or something. We don't know. I, I think there not. should be a line there. Yeah, because that would take a really long time to get comp cake back. Yeah, I really think there should be a line there because we're already at like, what, 14-hour missions? I mean, if we hit like... 38 hour missions and <laughs> day missions i would just be like yeah i'm just gonna pass <laughs> yeah i've gotten to the point where it's okay just not having a comp cape yeah. because of the elf city batch too and i've heard it's not that bad but you still don't have a camp, uh, comp cape yeah i just i roll with the max cape now it's not that yeah, much same. worse the main thing that you want it for is just the max skill teleport now yeah mm -hmm. and you can even use your max cape to Go to the max guild with the teleport. You can change it at the person inside the max guild. Yeah, I have mine toggled inside the max guild. Yeah. The max guild is probably like one of my favorite things about this year, but we'll get into that later. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what else happened for January is the mole came out, or the giant mole updated came out. Yep, reinvention of the squeal. That too. <laughs> so we had treasure hunter instead of squeal. <laughs> Yeah, I almost thought Treasure Hunter was last year, but I guess that was this January. No, it was, it was fe yeah, it came out in February. It was like announced in January that it was changing from Squeal to Treasure Hunter, and then I think the beginning of February, the first update, we got Treasure Hunter. So do you guys prefer Squeal or Treasure Hunter? I like the Treasure Hunter. I don't know. I think Treasure Hunter... I usually Hunter get better stuff. stuff. I, yeah. I've I noticed, that... I've noticed <laughs> lately the Treasure Hunter gives you a ton of raw materials. Like, I won, you know, 80 Magic Logs or something this morning. I don't remember yeah. that ever happening. Yeah, you get a lot of raw sharks, like 250 raw sharks and stuff. Like I, I never got that many raw materials from spins or whatever you want to call them. It's but, kind of, it's kind of cool because Treasure Hunter used to be only about the XP, and now you can make a little bit of money on it as well. Yeah, it used to be just like XP and gold. That's really all you got. You either got a a, a lot of GP or a lot of XP, and I'm glad it kind of steered away from that. I'd rather it be more like. You get daily materials to help you gain XP instead of just here's some XP. There you go. You know, like I, I'd rather that kind of format. I hope it's not affecting the economy too much though, because one thing I've noticed is magic logs are about 900 GP each now. Yep. So I, I don't mean, know if that's because you get a ton of them off Treasure Hunter now, or just because there's not a huge need for magic logs. Also, I think it's, it's probably no a combo bots. of both. And it's also because there's no bots. I mean, there's no bots, you know, cutting magic logs at least. I mean, there might be a few minute bots, like, killing something specifically in the Chaos Tunnels. Oh, there's, but, there's quite a few at Green Dragons. Yeah, that's, that was, that's like the only bot that I ever see around. Hopefully, we'll be able to take care of those. But basically, 
the only reason I, I say it's because bots aren't in the game. They're not doing magic logs, not doing U logs. So that plus the treasure hunter plus you know all the things like dailies, like you know you have divine magic trees, divine U trees, all that stuff just escalates all that stuff into the economy. It just kind of lowers the price of it genu generally. So. Oh yeah, like when divine box traps came out, I think yep. those poya meats went from 10k each to 1k each in about a month. Yep. They're not even yeah. that any like six hundred each. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not even worth anything. And Grenwall spikes are super cheap, which is sad because that was amazing money doing Grenwalls. Yep, and now it's not. It sucks. Yeah. Speaking of magic logs, just got some as a drop. Bandos is crazy. This is awesome <laughs> with the uh, with the bone crusher. I haven't had to drink a Peridos yet, and I'm at thirty four KC. Yep, you'll last a long time with that. Okay, so moving on into February, because that's really all there was for January. There wasn't a whole lot else. Yeah. Um, Treasure Hunter did come out, and then after that, I guess the Legacy mode was announced in February? Yeah, I think there was a pull in it the month before, and then I think there was a pull in December about it too, but then we got the first, like, real news about it in February. And what was your guys' initial reaction to that? I was excited, because a lot of my friends were going to come back to the game because of it, and I don't know, I never really would have used it, but... It's kind of cool that you would have the option to do both. Yeah, like for me personally, when I saw it announced, I was just like, ah, they're catering to the people who aren't fans of the new combat system and who aren't adjusted fully. And I was like, that's a good thing. I mean, it's going to bring back people to the game because from my perspective, I have to look at it from everything since I'm with the company and I'm on my own. You know, I try to look at everything with every kind of perspective. So when I first saw it announced, I was like, this is going to be good for the game because it'll bring people back It'll bring the people that don't really want to play the new combat system back into this. And I was just kind of worried. I was just like, are we really going to keep catering to the people? Like, what's next? Like, a 2009 server, 2010 server, 2011 <laughs> server? What, you know, where do we draw the line? At? Like, you know, enough is enough. You have everything you need. So uh, when I saw it, I was kind of initially worried, I guess. But when you and I had the chance to go down there for the, the little legacy mode testing thing, the alpha test, it was actually really cool, so... One thing that I think might have been a bit unexpected about Legacy Mode is that it did bring a lot of players back. You know, Initially, right. I thought it might be um, a little bit gimmicky, maybe a little bit too late, but there have been so many players that have come back from Legacy Mode. One thing I've been able to attest to, just in my friend's chat, since Legacy came out for probably the next month, there was people that were new to the game just coming back, asking for help all the time. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I know one of my friends personally came back, had no idea what half the stuff was. I had to like reteach him RuneScape <laughs> while he was playing Legacy. So, and a lot of these Legacy mode users have you know leveled up a bit and been interested in getting to some PVM, and that kind of forces them to learn the the combat system, and then right. they do turn over to using abilities, which I think is great in my opinion. Like that, the fact that they start with Legacy and then they're like, "Hey, I want to do Virago," and then we're like, "You can't use Legacy for that." Well, you can, but you can't use Legacy to be efficient with that, so switch over to the new one, we'll teach you that, and they do, and they're like, hey, this isn't bad, and because they're actually taking the time to learn it now, so. Yeah, we'll have fun getting on a Virago team if you're using Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would work. Well, I'm going to try that someday. Bomb tank on Legacy mode. Bomb oh, dude, have fun with that. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I was at Virago yesterday, and um, I had three of my friends get seismic wand drops. Two of them had invited me to the team, and I said no, so Ooh, that was so not fun. I had the same thing happen with me, and my friends are going, they're like, hey, are you sure you don't want to go? I was like, yeah, I'm going to just do Slayer and ban seismic wand. I was like, well, there goes my life. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm actually eating a fair amount of food here. I don't think Torva is great for defense. Eh, no. <laughs> Anyway, okay, what's next in February? Uh, the demon drop table up update. Yeah. Okay, so Abbey Demons, Black Demons, and Graders. Yep, yeah, I Abby thought it was pretty good, because I made yep. videos on each of them. It seemed pretty decent. Yeah, the Abbey Demons got the wand and the orb, and those were good money makers for a little while, except I didn't get any. I actually made a troll video about that, just a bunch of uncut ruby drops instead of abyssal orbs. So yeah, I saw that <laughs> one, that was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. I was just I I did a daily task obviously, and I skipped a lot of tasks for Abyssal Demon test specifically, and I just didn't get lucky at all. And I got so many ruby drops, I was like, screw it, I'm gonna make a video about it, and have a good laugh about it. So, interesting fact, I got a double Abyssal Orb drop recently. Did you? Yeah, they were like 200k each. So with with the mask. <laughs> yeah, because I reset my mask with that um thing that you got off of Treasure Hunter. Spirit of Battle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't know, like, Abbey Demons are crazy good money, even if you don't get an Abyssal Orb now. Yeah, yep. 
You get like 1.5 mil a task and it takes half an hour, so. And especially if you if you get the ashes, if you take the ashes, you keep those, and also if you pick up all like the rune ore and the magic logs and stuff, that's like 2 mil a task easy. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that just because of the fact that they're decent money. There's been a lot of Slayer monsters that have been updated to become pretty good money now, and that yep. hasn't been the case, but... I'm, they need to do that, though. I mean, I'm glad that they're covering the whole RuneScape. Like, they're changing everything to bring it up to date. Now, that's what's good about the Ninja Team, too, which is something we got this year as well, that they do all these things to make the game now. Like, bring it into this kind of time period where we have a lot of updates that are way beyond stuff that's really old in the game, so they got to bring it back up to code. I think Slayer right now is probably the best money it's ever been. And that and sounds it's crazy. XP <laughs> it's crazy good XP. You get like 700, 800k overall XP. That's counting everything. Do yep. Slayer. Mm -hmm. Which is really nice if you want to climb up to high score ranks. So a lot of people are doing that now. Yeah, I'm still going for 120, only like 15 mil away. So I'm oh, excited. That's really nice. I didn't know about that. Yep. I'm excited. And continue in February. 24th February Revolution came out. Yep. Which best update ever. Best, Very I think underrated update. A hundred percent. I think that's arguably the best update this year. It's definitely one of them. I I would definitely put it up there. I mean, it would yeah, have been best non farming related. Yep. Because I use Revolution for everything now, other than I don't use it for Virago and Res the Six, and sometimes Araxor when I'm feeling up for it. But yeah, that's. That's exactly what I do. I use Revolution for everything except for Virago, Rise of the Six, and I usually do it at Araxor because it's just easier to manage. Yeah, the bad thing with Araxor is it can really screw you over though. Sometimes because yeah, it, it, it oh, really yeah. wants to attack um, him yep. on the shield. Yep, when you click away too, it just automatically like starts attacking and you're like, no, no, I didn't, no, I didn't want that, no, no, stop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And one thing, another thing it does is that next on um, the shadow phase, it really screws you over because it drags you into the portals. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was having that problem yesterday. I still use it at next though, just because I don't know. Okay, moving on into March. Just going through this year because there's not a whole lot of the interesting updates till later on. In March, the first thing to come out was the combat beta. Yep. For the revolution. Mm -hmm. Well, revolution was already out, but was this the special attacks combat beta? I think so. Yeah. I think it was the yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'll look into it now, but. Which yeah, it was the it was the special attacks combat level, and I yeah. Yeah, it was the PVP changes, combat level, and all special attacks. Well, no special attacks. Mm -hmm. And overall, I think those special attacks were a little bit underwhelming. Yeah. I Off mean, the bat. enhanced Excalibur is nice, but other than that, what it, what do you really use for spec weapons? I mean, AGS and claws were like the two main things, I guess, that everyone was looking at. Just to see if it came back to normal. Yeah. I guess for Legacy PK and special attacks are nice, but in most other situations you don't really use them. I no, don't even yeah. think of them, so I don't even use them. Yeah, I don't even for remember the that they're there, to be honest. I mean, it's it's crazy because they tried to do additional things with special attacks, like the Noxious Staff and the Noxious Bow and stuff like that with the special attack of having the mirror back Spider come down and stuff. Mm -hmm. They try to do that, and it's just not, I mean, that's not really helpful, to be honest. It's okay, <laughs> but it's not, help, like, I don't even, like, think that my staff has a special attack, because that doesn't even cross my mind anymore, because it's just not that good. Yeah, I really wish some of these special attacks became special attacks that became normals in your ability rotation. Yep. Along with, you know, Destroy and Assault, you'd use this special attack as well. But. That would have been nice. Maybe, I don't know, we'll get future special attacks unlocked that would work on all weapons or something like that, more as an ability. Yeah, I think we need more class special attacks, like scimitars have a special attack, and the better your scimitar is, the better damage or special attack it does, you know. And then, same with all the other things, two-handers and long swords. and I think if we had class-specific special attacks, it might be more helpful and useful, like, oh, this thing damages through, you know, armor, and you that's good for one thing, and one thing's good for KK, and one thing's good for, you know, I think it would be good to have certain things that are good for specific tasks. Yeah, that'd be nice. Along with a, a shield buff to make shields better. Oh, absolutely. I know you were talking about that <laughs> when you were at the HQ. I know you were big into that one, and I completely agree with that. Yeah, I'm really a big proponent of making shields better. But that, I don't know. I mean, they got changed recently where, um, what, I think it's resonance heals more the higher tier your shield is now. Yeah, yep. And then you actually need a, a higher level shield to use some of the higher level abilities. But 
I don't know, it's alright. It doesn't make that much of a change. I don't think shields went up after that happened. Yeah, I don't think so. Not that much. I mean, they rose a little bit. The, like, when we saw Rots in the Vengeful Kite Shield and the Merciless and stuff, they rose a little bit, but then they kind of dropped back down because shields are still not the greatest thing and most helpful thing, so... Yeah, I personally really like doing Rots, so it'd be fun if they went up. Same. same. And then... The next thing that came out in March is two quests, two Grandmaster quests, which I think that's the first time that's ever happened. And that was Fate of the Gods. Well, Fate, yep. of, Fate of the Gods came out second. Uh, One of a Kind came out two weeks earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. A lot of changes with those. I don't really understand why they decided to release two Grandmaster quests in one month, though. I liked it just because I like Grandmaster quests. I mean, if I'm going to do a quest, I want it to be something that's going to give me a decent reward. I mean, we got the... Dragon Rider Ami, is that what it's called? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Case. And that, that Dragon Rider Ami is still, in most cases, the best in class if you're yes. using magic. Yep, absolutely. I mean, that that was a really good reward from one of a kind. Uh, the Fate of the Gods quest was awesome. I loved it. Uh, the Return of Zaros and the Shard of Zaros is one of the best, like, items that's... Oh, it's underrated just because it works everywhere in God Wars. You don't need, like, a next set. So. Yeah, it's a go-to item. I mean, pretty much everyone uses it now at God Wars. Yep. And also, before... Fate of the Gods, we also got Majorat Memories, which I don't know if a lot of people remember, but it was like a mini quest that was better than most of like the newer quests that are like lower level. I thought it was a lot of fun going to get the memories. I mean, it took a lot of time, it did, but yeah. I thought the rewards were fantastic. I thought it was cool, it was just a, a fun thing to do. It was like 700k Divination XP overall. Yeah, which was awesome at the time. I mean, that was fantastic. Yeah, and then you're actually getting, I think it's a comp cape requirement, which is the only reason why I yep. did it. Yeah, that's why people were upset. They were like, why is this a comp requirement? This isn't even a quest. This is like a mini thing. Why are we doing it? And I was like, guys, why are you all complaining? Like, enjoy the content. Like, who cares about exactly. your top cape for one minute? Enjoy it. It's pretty cool. Like, do it. I liked it just because of the Divination XP, and it was easy, so. Yeah. It's Time not, consuming, but easy. Yeah, it wasn't difficult at all. And then, like, I don't know. Do you guys like the Fate of the Gods quest overall? I like as a quest. Yeah, Most it was my are... favorite quest at the time. Yeah. Probably yeah, I mean, still my, is. My favorite ever is Well Gothic Sleeps. Uh, that's probably my favorite quest ever released. And I like that whole quest line, Ritual and Majorat and all that stuff. So Fate of the Gods kind of fell into that category for me. It was just really cool. I mean, I love Zero, so it was really cool to just see him in person and hear him. I thought it was really cool with the whole audio thing. I mean, I normally don't have audio on, but I turned audio on for that, and it was really cool. Oh, yeah, I turned audio on for that quest as well, and that's a very rare thing to happen. So. Yep, yep. <laughs> Had to be doing something right. <laughs> exactly. And then Muspas are just a great Slayer task. Firstly, yes. that's one of my favorites. Muspas are one of the best. I mean, it's. I would say it's somewhat AFK, I guess. Oh, it's it's completely okay. AFK. You can leave your keyboard. As yeah, long but you as just you have, have to make drop. Yeah, that too. Yeah. I don't use Turmoil there, though, or Mage Turmoil, so I have quite a bit of time. Ah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. I use I use all that stuff. So I augment. I think it's called augment. Rigors the range one and yeah. So anguish. Anguish. Oh yeah. Wait. Anguish and what's torment. Tor yeah. What's augment? I think that's the regular prayer ones. <laughs> yeah, those are the Whoops. tier seventy prayers. Yup. Whoops. And then like nihils were an awful task on release, but they're they're okay now. Are they? I haven't done them. Yeah. Because I like them though. Yeah, because on release there's only four spawns. Oh so. okay. Yeah, it was is really bad, but now there's a whole bunch, and they have they have good drops. Drop a lot of. They were like seeds. four mil an hour like a month ago. I don't know if they still are, but yeah, they're not quite as good now because the ice in the hills were changed, so they dropped the lent to them seeds a little less often. Oh. And also those uh, those nihil pouches that used to be two hundred k, they're like fifty k now. So yeah, they're That's dropped changed. a lot. Because I think sucks. people found out that you can make them and sell them for 200k. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which was a little bit crazy, but... Anyway, is there anything else that happened? Free-to-play high March. scores, action bar sharing, and clan messaging. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Yeah, March was pretty much covered. Yeah. There's too much to talk about there. April 1st, technical glitches. <laughs> kind of ironic <laughs> that that happened on April 1st. Yeah, I, I think that was more of a joke, or but there was actually technical. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, it was April Fool's Day prank, but unfortunately due to a technical glitch, a private jag. Oh, this was a troll. It was a. Um, <laughs> it was basically saying there's a technical glitch and that there was a private JMod sector of the forums revealed. Don't like, don't click on it. it everyone can see it. Don't click on it because it'll reveal <laughs> content. 
and everyone clicked on it was like, look at all the content coming out, but they got trolled because it was just fake. So they did, act <laughs> did they actually put content on there? No, not real content. They put like mounts and sailing and like, it was funny because I, I was offered to like write one of those things up because obviously, you know, working with them, I got an email. They're like, we're going to do an April Fool's thing where we reveal a fake forum post thing. And I was like, okay. And they're like, you could come up with an idea and put it on the forums. And I didn't get around to it because I was busy, but I could have put like a troll thing there. Like, Hey, we're going to get summoning familiars that can ride other summoning familiars and you can have a pack yak with a steel titan and you know it's gonna be you know, it was funny there was a lot of funny things on there but yeah none, none of it was real which would be kind of sad because that'd be awesome if we did have mounts in the game but yeah it would be cool i mean i i don't know how i'd feel about it but it would definitely be cool i would i would enjoy it i don't think that's ever gonna happen no i probably not anyway what else was there like bank updates quick presets and drag and drop was one of the best updates of the year, without a doubt. Oh yeah, absolutely. Bank absolutely. presets just changed almost every single bank standing skill. They changed herb lore the most by far. Making yeah. overloads is amazing now. Overloads became god tier. Yeah. They're almost like one and a half times as fast. I don't know, the XP rate changed a lot. Yeah, yeah it yeah. went from like a million to 1.6 I believe, million per hour. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere up there. That's It's ridiculous how good it is now. And like I personally used to hate making overloads. That was just Same. awful because there's so much. I think everyone did. Yeah. Now it's not bad at all. Even with Same. mouse keys, it was still a lot of clicking. It was just too much work, kind of for like four potions at a time. You're just like, this is yeah. not worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> the the one thing I have to like specifically talk about because it's one of my favorite things in the game, and I'm so mad that it came out this way. The <laughs> the Slayer Masks 3 from Treasure Hunter, that came out in April, the Slayer Masks 3rd batch, which I think contained the Strike Worms and stuff. I'm not sure exactly which masks were released. I think Dark Beast was with that. The, the Dark Beast one, yeah. There was. I, I don't know which one was which. I mean, it was a third batch of them, but I love the Slayer Masks. I think that that specific item in the game is fantastic. The fact that it teleports you, it has an emote, it counts your kills. I mean, I wish it counted the kills while it was in your inventory when doing the task, but that's another story. But Yeah, I wish. That would be awesome. But for me, I'm just upset that it came out on Treasure Hunter. Like, it was a great promotion idea, and I understand, you know, Jack is a company, obviously, from my mindset, that I, I have to know that, and I know that, but I just wish that it was the fact that, like, you know how Abyssal Demons drop the head. I wish you could turn the head into the mask or something, like, to make that drop worth it for you, since it's so rare. You know, I wish that you can make that into a mask or somehow do, like, tie that in with, like, Soul Wars and make a mask instead of a pet. I just wish that it was more of a rare drop item than a treasure hunter promotion thing like i don't mind treasure hunter i don't mind solomon's and all that but i wish those slayer masks were a drop or something like that because i just love those items so much i think they're a fantastic item so yeah i mean i kind of feel the same way personally i have like seven seven abbey demon heads and no idea what to do with them same i i think i have seven exactly too which is kind of weird i think they alk for about 5k or something so Woo! that's one use 5k in the bank what's up <laughs> yeah exactly um like, personally, I got the Dark Beast Mask, and that's probably my favorite one, just because that is such a good task. Oh, absolutely. The Abyssal Demon one's good, too, because you get a free Abyssal Demon task, and that obviously helps you get Abyssal Wands and Orbs, and that was good for the time period when those came out. But, but yeah, th those masks are awesome, in my opinion. I have all of them, which I'm lucky enough to have all of them, but I just I just love those items. Yeah, lately I've been canning Dark Beast, and it's really, really fast. My, my favorite tasks. <laughs> one it's of my favorite amazing. tasks by far. Yeah. And um, especially with how good of money they are now. Yep. Okay, like Cabbage Face Bunch Bonanza came out next. Yep. Which is a very underrated mini game because Slayer VIP tickets are awesome. Yes, the VIP tickets are very awesome, and now that you can get them through Rush of Blood as well, that's pretty cool as well. So. As well as it's probably the most overpowered mini game in the game for Iron Man because it's really, really good farming and mining XP. My yeah, mining bonus XP for sure. It's like 100k farming an hour or like 150k mining an hour, I think. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Crazy. Not a very fun mini game to play, though. And the problem with it is there's a lot of people who play it that just have no idea what they're doing, so they'll try to kill you and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. but, but you can't blame them because that's what like they're kind of designed to do. That's what the mini game's designed yeah. to. So you can't blame them if you're like, hey, why are you playing this for real? Like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the problem is, like, if you die and you turn into a monkey guard, you're pretty much screwed because you can't get hardly any points. Yep, exactly. Which is the only kind of, I guess, if you want to quote-unquote flaw of it, but that's the point of the game is, like, you know, to play the game. So, I don't know. 
It's an all right, mostly mostly forgotten mini game, but it's it's good. yeah. Uh -huh. and most people forgot it's there. They just pass the couch and like, what is this doing here? Like, why is that monkey still in the game? I thought that was over. <laughs> Best thing about it is there's a bank now by the oak trees. Yes, which that's is good great. for Iron Man and all that. Oh yeah, making those oak logs into oak planks. That was where I camped to get sixty construction or whatever. Wow. Anyway, I'm not really seeing anything else. Oh, uh, then Shadow of Rashdale came out. The 120 Skull Capes came out. Yeah, Master Capes. Oh, that Skull came Capes. out April? Yep. Yep, 28th. Oh, I think I this was... It might, yeah, it was the... Yep, Master Skull Capes came out. I, I didn't know if there was just the idea being mentioned on that, but yeah, that's when it came out. Yep. All right, so what, what 120 Capes do you guys have? Uh, <laughs> I have Dungeoneering, that's about it. I've got Dungeoneering, Strength, HP, Magic, Range, Summoning. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's what five? Uh, six. Oh, you got me beat. I only have five. Oh. If only... you count dungeoneering. Yeah, what true. If you count dungeoneering, without dungeoneering, I have five. But... I'm pretty close to 120 farming though, so that's gonna happen soon. Oh, are you? Yeah. How much are you that's at? Good. I'm at 92. Oh right, wow! I gotta, from I gotta go beat you. Yeah. War bands or? No. Um, I did war bands till about like. 30 mil farming or so. Everything okay. past then has been um, farm runs. Wow, good for you, dude. That's awesome. I mean, that's one of the capes I definitely want. I'm working on Slayer at the moment. Once I get that done, I can just go for overall XP gains. But yeah, I'm 31 mil farming, so I would definitely have a lot of work ahead of me. Festivore is really nice for tree runs. It works perfectly. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. what I use it on. Every day. But yeah, no, I think Master Skill Capes is also one of the better updates of the year as well. I mean, I, I don't like the fact of 120 skills. I don't think that there should ever be 120 skills in the game until we do what we're supposed to do next year, which is improve the skills. Like, smithing needs the biggest rehaul ever. It needs to be fixed and, uh, you know, updated. So rune isn't the best thing you can smith, which, meanwhile, no one in the game wears rune, so it's, like, useless. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's we need that first. We need to bring every skill up to code. I don't think we should add any new skills in. That's just my personal preference. I don't think we should have invention. I think we should just update all the skills, bring them up to code. And then, you know, if we were ever thinking about doing 120 skills, I'd say maybe 2016 we should break into that because we actually need the skills to be updated and more content there. But I like the skill cape just because it gives you something to kind of work forward to and look up to. Like, hey, I'm close to this. I'll actually try to get it. And it kind of gives you some motivation. So, I'm actually really curious how the 120 smith or smithing update that should be, how that's going to work out because, I mean, currently you can smith rune at 99. Yeah. And what, that's going to be like level 50 now or something like that? That's yeah, just that's what I've heard rumors of. That's what's going to be different. Like, I don't know. I I think personally, we were talking about this the other day in my clan. I was just talking about, like, what we would do with smithing. And I, I would hope that they would make it so we can smith dragon. I mean, at this point in the game, dragon's also not that heavily used. So yeah. dragon and rune are kind of stagnant with that. So why not be able to make it? I mean, you know, just why not? And then also, I think anything after that, like, you shouldn't be able to, like, smith barrows here. Yeah, like, you can't smith, like, bandos or barrows or anything like that. I don't think you should be able to do that. But, like, maybe they can change it so, like, this isn't just off the top of my head, I'm just saying this. You know, barrows, instead of getting an item, you get bar drops. And then you can make use the bars to make whatever you want, you know, barrel-wise. You could do that. But I also think you should be able to repair your armor in your inventory. I think that would be a cool perk to smithing. So, like, say you're doing a task and your tetsu breaks. You can just repair your tetsu in your inventory and it'll it'll cost you more than like what your house is so that the house is still viable but it would be that kind of thing yeah don't make the house dead content but yeah, yeah construction should be getting a rework eventually as well so yeah it shouldn't be too much of an issue one thing that might be interesting to see is maybe you could add like temporary improvements to your armor yes oh yeah yes, like temporary absolutely. buffs yeah that's that what cool. i think my friend was saying that to me uh, i didn't come up with the idea but he was like yeah what if you add like I don't know, you, you make a rune plate and you can add like shields to it or like to the side of it or like a shoulder pad thing which gives you increased armor or you have a spike on the side that gives you more damage just to, so to speak. Um, you know, something like that, I think that would be pretty interesting to like be able to buff your armor for like a short time period and yeah. That might be an interesting idea for a new skill. Um, that's the idea that I had, you know, kind of getting this from Skyrim but you know, enchanting armor and weapons. Right. For temporary mm -hmm. stuff. Right, right. Hoping that comes to the game someday, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what lies ahead in 2015. Anyway, like, the next thing that came out in the year was the RuneScape Road Trip. 
Yes, which yep. it's called Hell Week for me or Hell Month for me. <laughs> yeah, because you're uh, stamping all the time. Yeah, I mean, I had, I mean, I love doing that. Anything where I could bring the community together and help out with the community is something I'm huge for because I just love the game and the community. But that is like the, you know, everyone surround you, stamp, please, stamp, please, stamp, please. I'm like, <laughs> guys, I don't like, I don't pick you one by one. Like, hey, you over there in the back, come over here. I'm gonna stamp you on only you. Everyone else, you know, keep begging me because I'll get to... It's not like that. It's it's an AOE thing, which I'm happy about, which one thing I haven't really talked about that at all, but the uh, the fact that it's AOE now is because the first time we did this road trip kind of thing, when we had to give tickets out, it would individually, you would click it, and it would do 10 people at a time, and it would go to one person, give you a ticket, go to one person, give you a ticket, and it was really slow. And when there was a 1,000 people in one world one time, when I did, like, a late night one when, you know, Jagex isn't online... I did one of those to help everyone, you know, from my time zone, and <laughs> it was so bad. It was a thousand people, and every time it would start it, it would just lag me out, and it was so bad. Like, I was just like, we need an AOE thing, and they actually changed it because of that, so I was happy that we got an easier way to do it, but yeah, that's just like, it's now it's AOE, so no one has to beg stamp, please. It's pretty easy to get. Yeah, that's that's crazy, because I remember during that time, my entire Twitter feed was just spanned with Jmod saying, stamping session going on now. <laughs> <laughs> that was most likely me all the time. Yeah, you were there. There's a few other JMods that were doing that as well. Yep, all the community team. Shout out to the community team. I don't know. What did you guys think of the road trip overall? Was that all right? The cheeky I didn't monkey. really do it. The cheeky monkey was great. Yeah, the cheeky monkey is okay for thieving. I don't know if it's better than the abyssal lurker, but it keeps you from getting stunned. Yeah, once a minute, I think, or once uh, ten minutes. I don't know what is it. The time. I think it's pretty good at the Elf City Elves. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know I don't have one, but... I, I don't think you can get stunned at the Elf City Elves. Like, I don't think it counts towards the Elf City Elves, because it's them getting stunned, not you. So I'm not sure if the monkey counts for that, but if it does, then it would definitely be good. Okay, I mean, I would assume it does, because I know the Exoskeleton works there. It gets you, True. like, 30% less chance of getting caught. Oh, right, right, right. Yep. Set. yep. It probably does work, then. Okay, like, Elf City design documents came out. Elder Divination came out, which was, I don't know. I think that's the best way to train Divination up to level 85 or so. Yeah, something like that. And then, like, you also had, I think, the Muzpa pouches that came out with that as well. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else that came out with Elder Divination? I can't really remember. Uh, that was after Fate of the Gods, obviously, because you had that part where you had to do the Elder Divination thing. Yeah. So, I don't think so. I think that was just the... Pouch. I know we had to do the uh, the trim requirement where you had to get a hundred memories or whatever like that. I don't know if that was after Fate of the Gods or after the Elder Divination, but we had some kind of trim requirement with that. And then, was that when Transmuting Charms came out, or was this later? Hmm. Like the Elder Divination? Yeah. I think it was. Um, the Elder used for it. That's when the Sign of Death came out. Which is really nice for yeah, that is really yeah. nice for Araxor. Araxor is great there. Help out on day one for sure. My second Araxor kill I got, not the first but the second, was thanks to the sign of death. It went off and KO'd her, so that helps. That's the best. <laughs> the Araxor came out later. Elf City. I mean, this is when like we first started hearing about Elf City, right? In April. Yeah, yeah this is around there. Yep. Oh man, I was so excited for this when this first came out because I thought. And, you know, correctly assume that this would be, like, the new hub world where everyone went and hung out. Yep. Yep. I mean, quick poll between you two as well. Did you vote for Invention or Elf City? Elf City. Elf City. Okay, so did I. Do, would you think that if Invention was the game, would you like it more than Elf City now, or do you think that the Elf City was the right choice? Oh, no, I love Elf City. Elf all City. Way. All the way. Yes, yeah, same here. I, I personally don't think Invention should be in the game at all. I don't think that we should have it next year. I think we should do the skill reworks and stuff, but... Well, at least I, I, until all the skills are good. Yes. Yep. No, like, Elf City was my favorite update of the year, but that's that's coming up, so we'll get yes, into same. that later. <laughs> yeah. um, the next thing that came out is protein bars on Treasure Hunter, but um, the next real thing that came out was Ancient Combat, so we got the Blood Tendrils and mm -hmm. the Range and Mage versions of those. Yep. They were good when they first came out, I guess, and then I, I think they kind of fell off. I don't know if they changed them at all, but they're they're not very usable that much, in, in my opinion. I use the range and melee versions all the time. I don't yeah, use the, range, the magic Yeah, the range one. one's really good. Yeah. I don't I, really use the mage one, though. I can't stand the magic one because it cancels if the enemy moves. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. which happens almost everywhere when you're using magic, so it's just not very viable. Yeah. The range one's awesome, though. Absolutely the best, but... Yeah. You use that one at Rise of the Six a lot, which is kind of sketchy, because your health just disappears. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. At least Rise of the Six has been fixed, so you can't get, like, Shadow Realm at the very end now, so... Mm -hmm. That makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going through the updates in May... Am I missing anything really important that happened? I don't really think there's anything more. Dungeoneering Spotlight. Was that like the new reward items being added to DG? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yep. we got... That's the Calgarians update. And we got like um, coin collector stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. That's got... not when the... No, the Charming Imp was out way before that, right? I was just trying yeah, to... Yeah, the Charming Imp was the year before. Yeah, okay. I remember when that came out, but uh, like upgraded gem bag is probably my favorite favorite thing out of that so far. Yeah, that was one of the better ones. Cause just the fact that you can store dragon stones in the bag now is awesome. Mm -hmm. I used to have to leave them on the ground at Abbey Demons because I don't bring a yak there. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then Mighty Fall came out second of June. Yep. Which was oh, a like great quest. Yeah. In my opinion. For some people, because my friend died 47 times. Really? It was 47? really funny, but... <laughs> I think I got that boss fight the first time. It wasn't that bad. I mean, you just had to make yeah, sure really you ran wasn't. away. Yeah, it took me two tries, because I didn't really understand the whole concept of it when I first got in. I just kind of got KO'd like, right at the start, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I realized you just had to like run around or stay closer. or forget which one it was, but... When he did that mighty swing attack, you had to run to the side, otherwise... It yeah, at least like, like three squares yeah. away or whatever hit you for like 5k or something so that didn't work out too well but if you were in tetsu and overloaded it was quite easy it was easy yeah yep Speaking i liked it because i just like the the uh, what is it called the dialogue for yelps i just thought that was really funny like he's a starving businessman they took his business away and it's just his his dialogue was really funny did you guys end up killing him no i saved him i don't remember i think i killed him i spared him just because i don't know that's what I do. I'm kind of a nice guy. I wouldn't, wouldn't kill someone even if he caused us a lot of pain in the past. <laughs> I mean, I was never a big fan of, of Squeal, but when I when I like read his dialogue, I was like, oh, he's just an elf try. I mean, not an elf. He's just a, a goblin trying to make his own buck. So, you know, I'm not going to kill him. He's just doing his job like the rest of us, right? And then he gave me a spin ticket. It doesn't work, but he gave me a spin ticket. <laughs> that would have been awesome. It's like one <laughs> final spin. Just for 200 mil. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that quest was alright. Probably like decent XP reward and the God Wars Dungeon Teleport. Oh nice. BCP. The God Wars oh, really? Dungeon That's... Teleport was alright. Um it saves you like twenty seconds. Yeah. Not really that big of a deal, but and now with the max guild of course it's like getting to bosses is really easy now. But Yeah. We'll get into that later. I'm just writing down this. And then we also had the Legacy Mode Beta. Okay. Which is something that you and I, like I said earlier, we both went through. Which we did the Alpha version when we went and tested it. Did you end up spending a whole lot of time on the Beta? I didn't spend that much time because after playing the Alpha for, I guess, you know, two days or whatever we played it for, I yeah. didn't really see the need to, you know, go further. I kind of understood the gist of it. I logged in for the first day. I played it for probably, I'd say, like six or seven hours. And I just wanted to see if they changed anything or did anything different. And it was it was good. I didn't play it very often, but after that first day, I didn't play it much. So. The main thing I went on it for is just to test out the PK. And kind of an environment where you're just fighting random people. And yep. What I found out, to my dismay, is that almost everyone in the wilderness was using, you know, max gear. Because you could just get it at the time. So it wasn't very realistic, but it was still kind of fun. Yeah. Every single person was in the wilderness gears and AGSs, but oh well, that's what it's gonna be. Um, was there anything else that happened in June? Uh, skill champas, which were really good on the release, and no one really cares about them now, but they were really good money when they came out. They're still alright. I mean, you can hunt crimson skill champas to get like a mil an hour. Yeah. Which is great for um, you know lazy people because. If you don't want to gather all the ingredients to hunt draconics, skill chompas are a really nice alternative. And we also, in June, the best update for Slayer ever, Spring Cleaner. 
Oh yeah, that, that came out. The Spring Cleaner came out June twenty sixth. Oh, yeah. Treasure Hunter. I mean, obviously it's a Treasure Hunter item, but Spring Cleaner yet again another item that is like those Slayer masks that's just so good, so good. Not just oh. for Slayer, but it's almost a, a must anywhere you go now. For bossing and everything, it's so good. It's just it just makes everything so much easier. You make so much profit. I made like a hundred mil from Slayer without even noticing. So. Yeah, I sold my slur tab a little bit ago, and I had 55 mil worth of just rune ore and coal. It's mostly unbelievable. Mostly from Spring Cleaner. Unbelievable. And that was just from about, like, 15 mil slur XP. It wasn't it wasn't a ton. So right. It really adds up. I feel really bad for everyone that does not have a Spring Cleaner. Cause it's Same here. Yep. And do you know if you can still get that on Treasure Hunter? You can. I, it's just really rare. Yeah, I think it's, like, a super rare item, like a red slot one. Yep. Like, because I've been asked that question a lot lately by people. They're like, should I buy, you know, bonds to do some spins and see if I can get a spring cleaner? Probably not, because it's like really, really uncommon that you'll get it. But yeah, yeah, it's not the most common thing to get. So you're, you're really testing your luck when you're doing that. But if you do get it, you'll you'll be happy. I mean, I imagine you'll probably get it eventually, just because. For example, when the crafting outfit came out, I di I didn't get any of those pieces, and they became mm. super rare. And uh, gradually over time, I've gotten all the pieces of the crafting outfit. So it does happen. Okay. Just from doing your normal daily treasure hunter keys. Right. Okay, 1st of July was pest control rewards. And this almost became controversial because, you know, Void was super buffed <laughs> and then nerfed and then buffed again and then yeah. maybe nerfed again. I don't know where it's at right now. I think I think Void was the most updated piece of content throughout all of 20, 2014. Oh I'm pretty goodness. sure that it went back and forth and back and forth. Like, is this too strong? Is this too weak? Is this too strong? Is this too weak? It was just like the nonstop grind of Void, and people were so furious. I remember I remember two patch notes videos I made back to back. The first one, it was getting buffed, and everyone's like, yeah, Void buff, I love it. And then the next one was Void nerf. And everyone was like, no, what the hell are you doing? Why are you ruining Void? And then I made one like two weeks later where we changed it again. They're like, it's still not good. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I think we're at the point now where it's like, it's okay some places, but um, like next, next DPS is a good place to use it. For example, just because next has super high defense. Yeah. And it's still good at the abyss if you're training magic or defense there. So yeah, that's the where that's the place where you want to use it is PVM against monsters that have really high defense and you're not going to be taking a whole lot of damage. Exactly. And that's pretty much it. So it's a very situational piece of armor now. But like when Void was first updated, it was so good. So good. And you didn't even need any other armors. It was just like, I got Void, I am good. <laughs> yeah, because that was when like you had 10k health at this point. So. Yep. Yep. I mean, Void was good before Legacy 2, but the problem with it is just like the HP. You had hardly any. Yep. Exactly. It's like you couldn't really Virago in it because you had 5k health and you just die trying to get in. Yep. And then also in July we had the character name cleanup, which was <laughs> Hell Month. Oh my goodness. Some of my friends made so much money from that update. People made such a big deal about it. Like, I, if you're a long-time player and your name is, like, Firehawk88, okay, like, I can understand if you want your name or, like, if you're, you know, one of your favorite items or your, your favorite word is coming out. Like, if, if I was still Regicidal 1 and I, you know, Regicidal was being released, I would be super hyped about name changes. And I didn't care about name changes at all because I'm not going to change my name. But the people who, like, were going all out for it, it's just a name. Like, everyone's getting mad and sniping names and trying to sell... It's just a name. Like, if anyone spent, like, a bill for a name, why? Like, why'd you do that? I personally, I'm not going to say who it is, but I do know someone who spent $4 billion on a name. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's just, like, why? It's just, I mean, it's, okay, it represents your account, and it's cool, you know, you, oh, you have, like, a letter or a word, but it's just a name. Like, don't, don't drop your bank on a name. Yeah, I know. I'd rather I... have five bill in my, my coin pouch than be called, you know, like, I'm just gonna, what's the coolest thing I can think of off the top of my head? Fat Newblitz. <laughs> Yeah, bad news. There you go. Yeah, I'd rather have five bill in my bank than some name. Like that's. I think people were hyped about it because they do know that some of these um, really rich people are going to spend money on these names. That's true. A lot of people did it for the money making thing, not for the name, which I don't like. I think that the, the name changes should have been something where it's like, hey, names are being released. If you're a veteran, you know, get a name that you want, not to sell. Like I, I don't know. I just I wish it was more of people wanting names other than people wanting names to sell the names. Yeah, but the one thing is it's so easy to sell names now with Bonds is because you can just change your name twice and then the name's available. Right. Usually. Right. It was really glitchy around when the names were being released. But Yeah, the I first was batch was kind of dodgy. But... 
Yeah, I think like the RS servers went offline for a few hours when the names okay. came out and it was bad, but Okay, what else came out in July past that? Those uh rhinos which made Corp super easy when they were released. <laughs> oh yeah. Cuz uh, I was doing my Corp perfect. series during that and it made it like it was like night and day. I could go like twice or three times as many kills per trip. It was crazy. That's insane. Yeah, that's it's funny cuz we got like an email from work and I'm not going to go too in depth into it, but it was like the rhinos are really good for corp. Are we going to fix that? And it, it was kind of a thing that was replied to him was like, you know, it wouldn't be a good idea for trying to save the rhinos and they get stomped out by a corporal beast. So I'm pretty sure we're just going to let them be able to use them there. So, I mean, it was only a short term thing where, you know, you can only use it as like a pack yak for a little while, but it was just, it was just funny. They're like, yeah, we're not going to let this thing stop it out because we're trying to save the rhinos here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind if a piece of content is, like, really, really good as long as it's only in the game for a month. That's okay. Yep. And, yeah, I used those rhinos at Araxor. And this was... I guess Araxor did come out late July. Okay. I thought yep. that was an August thing, but July... Yeah, because the really sports sports for a little bit. Okay, so, quick question. How many kills did it take you guys to get your first Araxor kill? <laughs> like, how many tries? I know, you got it on your first attempt. Yeah, I did. And you did? Yeah, I did. did. I had well, my friend like you... talk to me on Skype through that entire kill, and I was just yelling the entire time. But when did you do it, it though? On the day of release? Um, I think it was like two days after the release. Oh, okay. Well, then now I know why you got on your first try. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I... yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't have gotten the first try first day. That would be like, I don't know. I was gonna much. say you're you're God. I was about I was about to <laughs> I was about to add you in game and be like, yo, teach me strats, please. Uh, <laughs> No, I, for me it was it was crazy. I don't know, you know what happened with you, Munkles, but I, I was for me it was just a complete hell. I streamed it like I stayed up all night, and I woke up and I was like, I'm gonna stream Arax. It was like the first time I was able to stream content once it came out. I'm like, I'm gonna stream this. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna get a kill. I'm gonna get multiple kills. I'm gonna teach people how to do this. And it was the most miserable thing I've ever experienced in my entire life because it's so hard to find out like you know all the things for a boss when we only saw one phase out of the four. So. It's really, you know, it was really hard to find out the mechanics of it, but I spent eight hours and I finally got my last kill. It was my last kill. I was like, you know what? I was raging. My internet was like going up and down and I couldn't like, I just couldn't do it. And I was like, you know what? Screw this. This is my last attempt, guys. I'm sorry if I can't get a kill, but I'm just sick of this. After eight hours, I'm like, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. My last kill, I did it. And I was like, yes, it was the best way to end a stream. I had like 1,800 viewers and people were flipping out. So uh, it took me like eight hours. I'm like, I don't know how many tries it was, but it took me eight hours. <laughs> I admit, like, I did, I think, four attempts. Um, I couldn't get it because my first two attempts, I just miserably failed. My second two attempts, I got to phase four, and I just didn't know about the dark core thing that you could just stand still and it wouldn't hit yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. And then the next day, I think, someone told me about that, and then on the fifth attempt, you know, after I knew about the dark core, it was a lot easier. So I got it oh, on the fifth yeah. attempt. That's what, basically, it was like, Chris L was watching my stream, and he PM'd me, he's like, why are you running? I was like, it's like Corp Beast, right? You gotta run away from the core. He's like, no, just like, you know, he's just like, focus. That's all he said, he's like, focus. And I was like, okay. And then I, I just stood still while I was bouncing around, and we counted it out, and it was like five things. I was like, oh, you, you could just wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if I did more attempts in the first day, I probably would have died a lot more, but. Yeah. And that was, I don't know, like, I had a huge problem with that boss, just so the way the drop table worked. But, I mean, as a boss fight itself, it's all right. I thought it was one of the better boss fights we've ever had just because it was so different. I mean, it's different paths, different attack styles. It was just the whole thing in general I thought was really good. That's just in my opinion. I think Chris L did a really good job with that. Yeah, I kind of wish it wasn't like a solo or duo boss only. But, yeah, in terms of mechanics, it is a really interesting and challenging boss fight, you know, at least for the first... For the first few week or so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, the only problem with the Raxor is just the fact that, you know, the stick attachment pieces, the only one that's worth making right now is the mage one. Yeah. Like, if you yep. make a bow or a scythe, you'll lose money, so there's yep. no yeah. reason. So I kind of wish that those were tradable, um, and maybe the stick pieces themselves were tradable as well, but... Yeah, that's what I, I didn't like about that, the fact that, you you know, you make a scythe, you get all the pieces, and you get the thing, and you actually lost money. Like, I, I don't like the, the concept of that. Like, you know, you can just sell the stick and make more money. I, I liked, I'd liked like the fact that if it was, you know, you make the weapon, you make more money, but it sucks that it's not that case, so. Maybe if those scythe pieces were tradable themselves, they'd sell for a little bit. I'm sure they wouldn't be worth zero, but. Right. We'll right. see. 
Um, I don't know, like, I hope no bosses in the future are like that, where, you know, none of the rare drops are tradable until you actually make the finished product, but... Right. And with I, the racks, we also got the boss timer and kill count stuff with the um, tracking for for the death assignments and Soul Reaper. Oh, yeah, and I love the boss timer, just because it's kind of fun to go for your record and kill Yes, it. yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's a really cool thing, just to be able to see, hey, you know, I killed it this fast, or I did it this well, or I've killed this many. So I thought that was a cool concept. And also, the last thing in July, besides the Adventurer Log redesign, um, we also got the Wish You Were in RuneScape competition, which I was able to like help out with, so that was cool. But that's that was it on that. <laughs> and that you just, what, people recorded video clips of themselves? Yeah, basically it was like a 45 second or less, like, I guess it was an advertisement for RuneScape, like come play RuneScape during the summer, you know, just kind of an advertisement, and you won uh, a trip to the, uh, you know, RuneFest, and the real escapers won it, so shout out to them, they got to go to... Uh, two people from Real Scapers got to go to RuneFest for free because they won the competition. But yeah, I made the example video for Wish You Were in RuneScape and got to help out with that whole competition and was one of the judges. So it was really cool. I'll admit I didn't take part in it, but yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. If tickets to RuneFest sounds cool. Yeah. And what, RuneFest was November? October. Say. October, yeah. So that didn't yeah. happen for a while, but... Yeah, RuneFest was, I think, two weeks before. Yeah, okay, it was in October, yep. Okay, so moving on into August, um, Plague's End, I think, was the first major thing that came out. Yep. In Clan Month. But Plague's End was the major update of the early part of this month, at least. Uh, Soul yep. Reaper as well. That's true, that's true. What did you guys think of the Plague's End quest as a whole? I liked it. Um, I don't know, the boss fight was kind of cool at the end. Yeah, I thought the the end. I thought the end was the best part. I I didn't like the beginning very much, but I thought that the end and I thought the way you know when you had to go through like the bog and all those you know the, the what's it called the waste I guess that place when you had to go through like the maze kind of thing. I thought it was a really cool you know concept for the quest, and I think that it it followed up the last quest pretty well within the light. I think it was, and it was good. I mean I, the fact that you know you unlock the best reward of you know our favorite update of the year, Elf City. Uh, you know that's the best part about it. But yeah, it was it was pretty good. It's pretty good. I think Dave released one thing that I was kind of shocked about is after I finished the quest, you know, this whole quest about defeating the mourners and everything, mm -hmm. and then I went back into West Darby and there's still mourners everywhere. I was like, what's going on? But um, they've been replaced now with those knights. I don't think they were on the first day. I was just really relieved with that quest that um, the light puzzle was actually quite easy. Yes. It really was, yeah. yeah I was, was a little bit worried about that one. I was, Yeah, me too. I was like, I don't want another one of those really difficult ones. I think it only took a couple hours, though. And then Soul Reaper came out, which was, I don't know. What did you guys think of that? I thought it was good. The fact that the Hydrix is still worth, like, 20 mil or 15 mil now, which is, it's you know, it's still viable for money if you want to do it. Um, mm -hmm. The comp requirements was pretty long. And it was just cool to, you know, get assigned bosses for, like, Slayer tasks and get free Slayer XP for it. Yeah, I mean, I've never really done it just because it's not very good Slayer XP. Mm -hmm. I mean, I That's only true. really do my task if I'm going to that boss anyway. Right. But, right. Yeah. I mean, I still haven't made a Hydrix or anything, and it's been a long time, so... Yeah, I've made four Hydrixes, so I made, like, 80 mil off of this whole, you know, Soul Reaper thing. I got all the rewards, and uh, it also encouraged me to do Slayer more, because you can use Slayer points to get two of the four rewards. So, it made me, like, really want to farm points, so I just did consecutive task after task, which racked up good Slayer XP. So, in general, it got me pretty good Slayer XP, because it motivated me to do that. Are you still doing these Soul Reaper tasks? No, I stopped actually just recently when the Elf City came out because there were so many daily things to do in the Elf City and so many comp requirements. I actually stopped doing Soul Reaper, but until the Elf City came out from its release, I did it every single day. I think I have 88 in a row I, I had or something like that. Okay. I mean, so I did it quite a while. So what are your guys' favorite tasks for Soul Reaper to do? A Raxor. Really? I like Legions because you have the chance of the Signet, but I didn't get anything. Also, I like... The uh, yeah, what, what do you want? I was just going to say, my personal favorite is Virago, just because I love Virago. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really do the tasks other than that. Maybe Nex is all right. KK is all right. They're kind of fun to do. Yeah, no, I, I love KK yeah. as well. Araxor was my favorite just because it was the best Slayer XP. It was the most points, and it only took about 30 minutes. If you, you know, eight, eight minutes, nine minutes to kill if you get three or four assigned to you. So it was a really fast task, really good XP, and it was just, you know, good points. So it was the best thing to farm for Soul Reaper points. KK Soul Reaper is really fun as well because like one thing I've been doing a lot lately is speed kills. 
Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we typically do four man and it's like, you know, one minute 20 per KK kill. So it's actually really good money overall, even with the current price of Dragors. Right, right. So I was surprised because you can average a Dragor an hour. Um, and so what, you average like eight to 10 mil per split. Mm -hmm. So it's it's insane money, even with the current prices. But um, yeah, no, it's, I... it's just really hard to get people to actually be willing to do that because everyone just assumes it's bad money because it's four man. Right. I, I love KK ever since it came out. I mean, I made, I think, 700 mil or 600 mil on release with, you know, that whole week. Me and my friends did KK, and we made a lot of money. So I, it's one of my favorite bosses in the game. That rots. I just like the whole team element of it, and it's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to get all six of the Dragors again. I've done it a couple times before, but for the third time now. Did you? The YouTube series, so. That's yeah, cool. I, I, I previously did a series where I went for all six Dragors, and I got them, like, really, really quickly. Um, oh, wow. So, I got insanely lucky and made a ton of money, but that's awesome. I'll have to watch those because that's that sounds like a fun little. So I did the same thing with like all the God Wars armor on on Twitch, so I I, <laughs> I didn't get that so fast. I mean, Zami, I got all of the bandos and armor sets, and I didn't get any Zami drops. I was like, uh, this is kind of embarrassing. And I was doing Zami, I just never got lucky there. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I have a terrible luck at Zami too, and um, you know, pretty okay luck at the other ones. Yeah, same here. It's I I don't know why. I guess we're just forever vexed with uh with zami terrible luck i think a friend has that too he was um complaining about not getting any drops of zami ever maybe zami just has a worse drop rate or drop chance zami is like the anti-youtuber luck yeah i got pretty lucky there when i did uh 1000 i got like three garbs or not garbs gowns and a trip oh wow. and one of the times i got a, a gown and an effigy in the same drop it's pretty wow. epic. Okay. I guess I guess your luck's a little bit different. You didn't get the uh, you didn't get the contract. Get screwed at Zami. Sign, <laughs> yep. sign here. Um, yeah. Also, I saw I see in here that the character name cleanup was actually in August. It just was mentioned in July. So yeah, the name okay. change thing was in August. The craziness happened, and then For um, Balthazar's raffle came out at the end of August, which was which. Yep. I don't know. Ticket, Do please. <laughs> I, I just love the fact how Balthasar was still in the game two months after that left of the game. <laughs> yeah, same here. We were just chilling at Birthorp like, hey, I don't do much, but uh, I'm watching the view here. Nice bonfire. Yeah, and you talk to him, he's just like, sorry, I can't say anything to you. <laughs> I still have two golden tickets that I can't use with anything. Yeah, same here. I think the reason why they left him in the game like that is for people that didn't log on for a long time to claim the rewards or something yes, like that. But that's what it was, so yeah. He was in the game for so long, I really didn't he understand was. it. He was. It was funny. I was like, man, he's just blowing out that megaphone. This doesn't stop. I love the fact how um, if you traded him and tried to give him too many tickets, like more than you actually have, he called you out for being a scammer. Scammer, yeah. yeah <laughs> Everyone that. don't trade with blah, 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 because he's a scammer. Don't do it. I'll admit I did that for about 10 minutes straight once. Wow. <laughs> One of those days when I was really bored. Oh, I think looking, my back at it, looking back at it right now, uh, I think right now July and August were two of the better months we had update wise. I agree. Yeah, because of the boss tasks and Plague's End. Yeah, we got Plague's End, Soul Reaper, Barbarian yep. Assault rework. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Didn't even go over. That's Which true. was all right. I mean, I've heard that it's actually better XP than it used to be. Yes. Yeah, it is. And those insignias are pretty good too. The attackers insignia is really good for. Um, just getting the final, like, putting a bleed effect on them. The collector's one's supposed to be okay, but it's not much of a difference than, like, a ring of wealth. I, all those, like, increased drop chance things I don't really believe in. So. I mean, I've heard it's okay. Like, for example, if you use a ring of wealth at next, I think it's been proven that the drop rate goes to 1 in 28 instead of 1 in 30. Oh, okay. And then with the collector's in Sydney, it's, like, 1 in 26 or something. Okay. So it's probably worth using um, if you love Barbarian Assault and are going to do yes. it. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad to recharge them. Once you have the insignia, it's not bad. Uh, it's really easy to maintain because on your way to getting the insignias, you get a lot of the recharge things. So it's not that terrible to keep up with them, and it's not expensive if you even just bought them on the GE. But getting the actual insignia itself is what takes the time because you need five king kills. So Another thing is um, just doing Barbarian Assault is ridiculous agility XP, although hardly yeah. anyone takes advantage of that. Yep, and it was ridiculous, even more ridiculous, fire-making XP. If for some reason, if you wanted fire-making over agility, it was no, oh, it's like crazy. It's like one mil bonus fire-making an hour. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I had a friend who's um, who does a lot of Barbarian Assault. His name's Bakey, and um, he said that the most he's ever gotten in an hour is like 850k agility XP. So Wow. 
Yeah, you could bank 99 agility very, very fast doing that. That's ridiculous. Anyway, okay, I think that's that's about it for August. So, September. Expert skill capes was the first thing that came out. Expert skill capes. Looks yeah, like. those, are the, those are the combination ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those things that clogged up your bank tabs. <laughs> yeah, the, the funniest thing I thought about that was when you put them in your house. You actually had to pay money to take them out of your thing. I was like, why? <laughs> I remember that because they have stats on them. Everything. Yeah, I was like, why? I got, no one's going to pay. Like, I'll just keep it in my bank, I guess. But, like, what a waste of bank space. That would be so dumb if um, in real life, you know, you had to pay the money to take your clothes out of your closet. Or <laughs> it's like that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, pay money to get uh, money out of your bank. Just a total double that. Yeah, well, I guess that's what ATMs are. Yeah, I guess so. So you technically are paying to get your own money out, so. I don't know. I mean, there's not really much to be said about expert skill capes. I went for the fishing shard for about seven hours and never got it, so. Wow, really? I just really? gave up on that one. That's terrible. I got all, all the other shards fairly easily, but just never could get that fishing shard. Wow. Um, okay, double XP weekend was announced, but that wasn't until November. Yeah. Right. We had rune value improvements. Yes. Which has was... really worked if you've seen the price of fire runes lately. Yeah, they are definitely uh, went up a little bit from all the rune Goldberg machine and all that stuff, with the uh, removing them from the monster drop tables and stuff. Except for like fire runes and stuff. Fire runes are like 50 GP or 60 GP each now. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Because it used to be almost every single Slayer monster would drop them, and, and now nothing drops them. So. Did blood runes or death runes get affected much by that? I know blood runes and death runes are still kind of commonly dropped, not really, but like Dark Beast and Muspas, they drop them a lot. I think Death Runes went up more than Blood Runes. Okay. Like not not like higher than the other, but they had a bigger in increase. Well, Blood okay. Runes are 500 GP in the GE now, and they're like 250 before that came out. But wow. I think they're still a little bit affected by the Blood Necklaces, so... Yeah, yeah that's, we might that's, not know that's the probably why. Because I think they were like 300, um, like a month and a half ago, before Edemu. Which I don't understand why people would even bother to repair their blood necklaces, blood runes. It's cheaper just to repair it on your house. Yeah, I don't exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But Not whatever. at all. Okay. Um, patch week, bonus XP swap shop. Not really a whole lot there. I mean, the bonus XP swap shop was kind of a scam because you trade in a ton of bonus XP for like a fourth of that in another skill. Yeah, I, I did, did it for farming. I got like 800k farming. Because I wouldn't have used it on the other skills anyways. So yeah. I liked it. When I was going for basically 99 all stats twice, my goal was like what, 26 mil XP in each skill, and I, I wanted to get crafting. I only had like 22 mil crafting XP, but I didn't realize that like daily flasks and all the daily crafting stuff I do gives me so much XP. And I did that for a while, and I ended up with like 27 mil crafting XP, and I had like 2 mil bonus XP because I was putting all of my bonus XP into crafting because I thought it was going to be expensive. And uh, I ended up having so much crafting XP that I was never going to use, so I transferred the crafting XP to sl uh, crafting bonus XP to Slayer XP. So I guess it was kind of worth it for me because I was never going to really touch on that crafting XP. But. And how much Slayer did you get out of that? I think I got 800k Slayer XP for like 2 mil crafting bonus XP. I think that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, it, that was like the exchange rate. Yeah. Most part. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought. No, I, I just I, put I just put all my bonus XP on divination. I have five mil bonus and I mean I just never use it, so Right. I used to have a lot of bonus divination XP, but I somehow I guess because I, I had a uh, daily challenge of divination for a long time and I got rid of all of it and now I have thirty four mil divination XP, so I, I guess it's worth it. That's a lot. Yeah, if I used mine I'd be like Um I'm bad at math, but somewhere around twenty five mil divination. Okay. So I was kind of going for 20 mil all skills just because I think, you know, that the 2 zero looks a little bit cooler than when you're hovering 13. around 99. Yeah. I got most of them done, like, five skills left to go or something, but I don't know. Yeah, that was my goal for a long time, double 99 everything. I got that, and now I'm kind of going for, like, 30 mil everything. But now I'm more working towards, like, 120s and 200 mils, so. So what's your overall XP now? Mine's 1.57, Bill. Okay, so you're right about 100 mil ahead of me. Yeah, I've skilled my whole life. Skilled my whole life ahead of me. But yeah, it's I only have a few skills that aren't 30 mil over. I just need to get more uh, more 120 stuff. Because I have 200 mil dunge, which... Do you have that? I'm at 165 mil. It's just it's going up slowly from daily challenges. Yeah, it's so easy with sinkholes and daily challenges now. Yeah, I don't ever do dungeoneering. Mm, yeah, no, I don't think anyone does anymore. 
There's a few people, but, um, all right, moving on in October. Wow, there's, like, a whole bunch of RuneFest and BTS videos. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see any real updates. I mean, other than, like, the wealth of, the wealth, uh, wealth evaluator thing. Which was, uh, not that useful because it price-checked all your untradeable items when it came out. Right, yep. and then it's that later on. I remember I got that day of release, and I price checked my bank, and it's like four point five bill. Okay, <laughs> where'd all this come from? Yeah, right. I had no idea what was going on at first, and then apparently, um, if you had degraded dragors, they they were like four hundred mil each. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. So yeah, that's a little bit too much, but wait. So did the beast and ghost drop tables update come in October, or I don't really see it anywhere. I just see the BTS. Yeah, it was the BTS for it, and it came out during that month. I don't think it's on this list, actually, but yeah, that it okay. did. Well, that made, like, Gargoyles a really good task for money, and it still is good money. And we also like, got Broken Home in October, that quest. That one was a good one. I like that one. And, like, Dark Beasts were updated, right? That was my favorite yep. thing about that drop table. Yeah, they're, they're still good. Yep. They're still good. Dark Speaking Beasts are, like, Dark three mil an hour. Speaking about Dark Beasts, I just got a Crystal Triskelion fragment, too, from them, so. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to the Dark Beasts. Nice. I know they're one of the best things in the game that drop brawling gloves, so that's yeah. a good reason. To oh yeah, them. I've gotten two or three of my brawlings from them. I've gotten pretty much half of the brawling gloves I've had from Dark Beast. They are amazing. Speaking of brawling gloves, one really cool way to use them recently, because I had, I think, four pairs of hunter brawlers, is you just drop those divination box traps. Yeah, the one is yep. really OP. It's like 80, 80k for just one use, right? It's, yeah, oh, it's I extend cool. them. It's almost 200k hunter. Really? Wow. After Damn. extending it with Viswax. So. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> it does use up the brawling gloves fast, so one brawling glove lasts like two days. But still, it's it's awesome. That's pretty sick. <laughs> and, um, okay, so like Broke at Home, I think a lot of people have told me that the Asylum gener General's Ring, what's that called? Yeah, it's called the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. That's the best one. Yeah. And do you guys have that? Yep. I do, but I don't think I've ever used it. I think it's like one of the best rings in the game. But... It's really good. I use it for everything. It's it's really RNG kind of like when it ticks off for not letting you, you know, use adrenaline for the threshold ability. It's it's very random, but when it does go off, it's hmm. like really awesome obviously because then you can just use another threshold right away or you can, you know, work towards the ultimate really quickly. So it, it does help a lot, but it's uh I, I thought it was cool just broken home in general doing that kind of time thing. It kinda of added a different element to questing. And the reward was definitely worth it because this rank's pretty good. I'll admit I still have not done Broken Home because I was just too taken up with Iron Man at the time. Oh, okay. Oh, which okay. Iron Man came out I think September and we didn't even see that, so that's an important thing to talk about. Yeah, it is very important. Yeah, Iron Man did come out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I Lee. Did you make that. an Iron Man account? No, no, Iron Man did not come out in September. Iron Man didn't. We we at Runefest we announced it was going to come out the week after. So I think. October. Iron Man came out in October or November. <clears throat> okay. I think it was October. It was, because it, was, it came yeah, out while it was, it was October. Yeah, it was October. Okay, well, there wasn't really much else to talk about in October. I mean, Skill Stations returned, which was nice, because those are really good. But other than that, not a whole lot happened. And the Wells helped with uh, bonus XP with making overloads and stuff, which I made a few, so. Oh, yeah. Like, the portable forges are just amazing. They make smithing free. Yep. It's not ASK, but it is free, so that's it, it a really is. fun thing to do. But, um, I don't know, like, I made an Iron Man account, like, I know, you know, Fat Nooblet, you've made an Iron Man account. Oh, yeah. Nat Fooblet. Nat Fooblet, yeah, exactly. So what do you guys think of Iron Man overall? Like, good I update? I think it's really fun. I As an update, I, it's pretty good, but, I mean, a year from now, I don't think a lot of people will be playing it. I don't really know how much it added to the game, but overall, like, for people that did want to create an extra Iron Man account, it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah, I mean, I had fun with it when I first came out. Like, it was a lot of hype at the office, and I was working in the office right after RuneFest, so I made an account while I was at the, the office, and I was giving it a go, and it was fun. I mean, it was a good thing, but then I found myself at, like, a crossroads. Like, I don't have any goals on this, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I play on my, my main all the time, and I have, you know, I'm going for 120 Slider and all these other goals, and I, I'm a kind of person who's driven by goals. Like, I set a goal for myself and I knock it down. And with Iron Man, I kind of hit this spot where I was like, 
what's my goal? I was just grinding quests for a while and getting like all my skills to like 40 and 50. And I was like, what am I really doing here? Like I didn't have any goals. So I was like, I'm just kind of bored of it. And that was just my perspective. I think it's an amazing thing and update and a lot of people are having fun with it. And it brought a lot of new people in and a lot of people made another account just to, you know, do Iron Man, hardcore is awesome. But for me just personally is, you know, I have so much fun on my main that I don't really need an Iron Man to have kind of fun with the game. But it is an interesting concept and it is a lot of fun if you really enjoy that kind of game style. Yeah, my favorite thing about it is it just, it works really well when you're doing something AFK on your main. Yes. Something to sell fun with. Like mm -hmm. me personally, I'm going for 120 prayer at the moment. Doing those cleansing stones, which are amazing. I cannot state like how fun those are to do, but, um, and it just works perfectly for Iron Man. Yeah, I mean, that's what's cool about it is that Iron Man is truly like a game type that it was made by the players, really. I mean, we kind of created that kind of game style. I mean, Andrew Gower technically created the game style, but, you know, we as streamers and video makers, you know, started the whole, you know, Iron Man or, you know, that whole kind of name to it or, you know, a self-sufficient account. So it's cool that we actually got a whole mode into it because so many people were doing it by themselves in the game. So that's I think that's something cool for the community to be like, hey, we actually all brought this in the game. Did you guys ever hear about the Max Cape from scratch? Yes. Yeah, like I, that's where Iron Man started. Yep. Um, and I think the guy who originally started that, Robson, I think he's still going on his account, his original one. Oh, is he? Yeah, like he doesn't yeah. make videos anymore, but he still streams. Wow. Yeah, yeah I know he streams, streams every now and then. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's like a three-year commitment or whatever now. It's, it's been great. a while. <clears throat> Good for him. And then... um. There wasn't really a whole lot else in October. Um, Elf City came out somewhere in here. I guess that was the 10th of November? No, 10th of November was Elf City Part 2. So That's when did Elf two. City Part 1 come out? Yeah, when did we miss Elf City completely? Yeah. I can look it up. Road to Elf City Episode 4 was in August. Okay. I think it was like in September, Road to, right? Road to uh, Elf City. It was... September? 22nd of September. We totally missed that. Yep. For Dennis Lost City of the Elves. Wow, I totally moved. Totally How did we not see that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't even think it's on this list. It just says Podcast Elf City Feedback. And it, no, no, it's, it's on the list. 22nd okay. September, it says. Oh, uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. For Dennis, and yeah. I, okay, that totally went over our heads. Yeah, wow, we skipped that completely. So let's let's rewind back to September. <laughs> <laughs> Going back in time. Let's go that, back in time from October. Okay, do you guys have any dispute that this was the best update of the year? No, it's 100%. No. I so thought... what are your guys' favorite thing about Elf City? Whew. You should already know my answer. Um, the Tell farming them. patches? Yep. <laughs> Obviously yeah. the extra tree on the farm run. Yeah, and then the fruit tree came out recently too, so that's been awesome. It's, extra like, an extra, it's like an extra 35 to 50k GP every run just from the coconuts on my run. I mean, I mean, doing, you know, 500,000 runs a day, I mean, that would obviously make me a lot more money now. Right. I think the best thing about Elf City is, like, when I first went into it, there was just that feeling of, like, you have no idea what's going on and there's so much to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You that felt feeling is amazing. Yeah. yeah, for the, about the first day, but, yeah, it was it was amazing. Yeah, uh, I, my my favorite thing about Elf City was more brand, but the the extra farming patches are really nice as well. That's what I say. I usually when I say, you know, what's my favorite thing about the Max Guild, I would say that it would be for me personally, it's more Ren as well cuz Slayer grinds, but Max the Max Guild's awesome with the portals and everything like that. I just think in general, it's just really awesome town that you can pretty much do everything inside of. I don't like the fact that you can pretty much like just live in the Elf City, but it it's just brought so much different things into the game it brought so many different like crystal equipment and, you know i love that crystal hatchet and pickaxe just there's so many cool things that are there and there's still hidden titles which is awesome and grats on your war shield by the way <laughs> grats on 40k i actually needed that one so that's okay <laughs> yeah, what are you doing your boss series yeah all i need now is um i think the gloves and then i'm that's done with bandos sweet. there you go i need the war shield and the gloves and war shield what are you doing i get all of the armors from Oh, I'm doing get every drop from every boss. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, does that include the uh, Raxor pets? I know no. you were like discussing that. All right. No, I'm not including pets because you know it's a cosmetic. It doesn't. Vitalis too. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. That, I don't think that would happen. But. Yeah. No, but El City back to back to Drac right here. Um, El City was definitely 
the update of the year. Just there's so much. I mean, there's still titles to be found. There's still so many things to do. I mean, there's great training methods within it. It's never going to be a piece of dead content. Like there's always going to yeah. be something in there. I like all the dailies you can do. It really makes you do stuff. Like the uh, the crystal sandstone. Right. That I'm probably going to go for like 30k. I don't know how long that would take, but still do it every day. And then a lot of crafting experience through that. I'll admit I still have never mined that crystal sandstone stuff. Really? I mean, just the first day. Does I've it sell it. for a lot? Uh, uh, each, I think. I don't really think it sells that much anymore because there's so much in the game. Yeah. But it's still I'm like good crafting and mining because it's more than the other sandstone in terms of yeah, experience. Yeah, you can do you can do 75 a day with the 25 <clears> in the in the mall place and 50 from mm -hmm. the actual rock. And I think they sell for like 800 to 1.2k each now, so it's there. There's a lot of them in the game, but I've done it ever since it came out, and I have 2,100 of them. So, I mean, if yeah. you just with it, it's just free mining, crafting XP, like he said. So, so you might as well just keep your own for making potions. Yeah. Which I mean, the combination potions came out with Elf City Batch too, but still, those are really, really good. They yeah. are really good, actually. <laughs> yeah, Supreme Overloads have completely replaced Overloads for me. Yeah, and they're actually cheaper to make than making the ch you know the same amount of yeah. It's a little overload. bit cheaper per dose. Yeah, it's like thirteen k, uh, not per dose, but thirteen k total, less. And then holy overloads are cheaper because you just put four doses of each and you get six doses. Yeah. Yeah, holy overloads would also be a little bit easier to make too, probably because mm -hmm. you don't have to get all those super potions. Yeah. I don't know. I just use the holy ones on Slayer and then the Supremes on like bossing. That's what I do. Yeah, I mean, I just, I feel okay using overloads everywhere um, now that requires them. Like, I don't use overloads on stuff like Dark Beast, but everything that has high requirements, because eventually, you know, the only thing I really care about for money is getting XP, so mm -hmm. making the overloads goes back into Herbler. Um, I guess the other things with Elf City is, I mean, we got a couple new Slayer monsters, Shadow Creatures and Edemus. I made so much money at Edemu in like five minutes. On my and seventh they, kill, I got a blood shard. And did then, you? Yeah, nice. I did. And then my next trip, I got another blood shard. So I made like 28 mil. Wow. <laughs> that was yeah, pretty epic. Still, they're still really expensive. I know, especially after you made your video, uh, Monkles, I know that you spread awareness about the, the necklaces being pretty good. And I, I knew they were going to be good just because, and I wanted them just for myself because I like the blood neck and dungeoneering and I like that effect. So I wanted them all for myself, and I actually in 1,500 kills, I got all three of my own shards, so I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, one thing that's kind of saddening is I thought, I was under the impression that they were going to be um, reworked to work with all bosses instead of, you know, they don't work with most of the high tier ones. Mm -hmm. uh, they do work with KK, but pretty much all the other high tier bosses they don't work with. Right. Um, I was hearing that they were going to get updated to do that, but apparently now it's not because people were saying that they don't want that to happen on the forums. Uh, so that's kind of sad, but it's so still hard. really, really good at God Wars Dungeon. And if you don't have Soul Split, like the Blood Necklace is amazing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just for Slayer and everything, it can keep. Even you if you have Soul Split, it's just an additional heal. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the Blood Necklace itself, as long as you're not doing like multi-target cannon Slayer or something, it will keep you alive all on its own. Yep. Yeah, I saw your video on that. I was like, yeah, that's my necklaces. Yeah, I did a spiritual mage task recently. Well, not a task, but I just went and camped spiritual mages. Mm -hmm. for, um, I think I was making a video about it. And the the blood necklace shard kept me alive. I didn't have to eat any food the entire um, wow. task. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's the great thing about it. Um, I don't know. What else was there in Priftiness? If There's just so much. Uh, Seren stones are Beast. best mining in the game now, other than like if you want to do lava flow for those geysers. Yeah. Yeah. Which I helped create. Yes. <laughs> that's so like, that's one claim to fame that I was able to. I invented the Encando pickaxe. That's like the one the one item that I could say I created and have in the game, which I'm very happy about because it's not a crappy item. So <laughs> So when you made those lava geysers, uh, did you want that to be the best mining XP in the game? I didn't have that in mind. I wanted it to be viable and not like something that you just do once for the pickaxe and never go back to again. So when I when I came up with that concept, I was like, I made a whole mini game actually. It was called the Lava Overflow because in the email they're like, hey, when you guys get sent over here, you know, we're reworking the Lava Flow mine. We want to add something to it, and we want to add a game to it or something. And I was like, oh, okay. So I created this whole concept of a Lava Overflow and the reward was the Encanto pickaxe, a golden mining suit, got like a dwarven mining suit. It was not like the golden one, but it was different. I don't know. I had a bunch of ideas for it, 
And when I got there, they were like, hey, we're not, this is a little too big. We're looking to create something pretty small, just to add into the lava, you know, lava flow mine. I was like, oh, my bad. So I took one of the elements out of that, which is the geyser that you freeze, and you do that. And we took that, and we made that into the lava, the lava mine. So I thought that was really cool. And then I didn't expect it to be, you know, really, really, really good XP. But I wanted it to be something that you can constantly go back to, so it's not just dead content. You get the pickaxe and you go away. But even with the pickaxe, you have to, if you want to recharge it, it's good to go back. I mean, apparently that's the best mining XP in the game. I've never tried it personally, and I wouldn't because, you know, Saren stones. Like, there's no need to do anything else. But um, apparently if you are really worried about the fastest, you do that in World Hop or something like that. But mining is all about AFK, so I don't think I'm ever going to do that personally. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have, what, two months left, November and December, which, you know, December, we're still halfway through, but November, um, that was when the part two of Elf City came out. Yes. Yep. And then after that, we had the Treasure Trails update, yep. which was, I don't know, have you guys done a whole lot of clues for that? I did my 10 Triskelions, and I did all the elites from it, and I got, I think, like 6.5 mil combined from the... Just got only loot and the elites. My best elite was like 500k, and then the item sold for 15k, so it was only like 200k instead. <laughs> so, I mean, it was fun, though, because I never really do clues. But, yeah, yeah I, it's an okay update. Not, like, spectacular or anything. I had an elite banked, and I had seven Triskelion keys. I did five Triskelion keys, and I did one elite, so I did six elite clues total, and I got nothing. I, I got the same reward for the Triskelion keys every time, and it was like 500, 600k each, so I was happy about that. So I made like yeah. one of those rewards. But from the clues itself, I got nothing. I think my highest reward was like 350k or 400k. So, I mean, I wish that the basic loot was a little bit better still, like no meerkat pouches and stuff, like get rid of those. But... I didn't get any dyes or anything really cool, so... I mean, I want the sack of effigies so bad. Yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah. The problem with the clues, though, is, like, if you want to make money from them, you have to get lucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, they're just not worth it at all. So, I mean, like, I think the the dyes still hold a fairly decent price. Yeah, um, they do. Even though they are only a cosmetic item, apparently, you know, you can repair your tier 90 sets using it on them. Yep. But with it's the one. But it's still really expensive to repair them, so it's not really worth it. Okay. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, they look awesome. The shadow yep. die looks amazing. The shadows, awesome. yeah, absolutely. The third age looks cool too. The barrows one isn't the most appealing one, but you can also repair repair your items with the die on it. I think it's with all of them, but I know for barrows for sure. So. <laughs> I just love with the shadow. You look like one of the brothers from Rise of the Six. Yep, that's the cool part about it. That looks amazing. I mean, can you use that on barrows armor? Or is that just tier ninety sets? I think it's just two ninety sets. That'd be cool if you could like use it on a barrow set and then go around looking. Shadow like barrows, yeah. Barrows, brother. That would be awesome. It would be a whole new thing on, uh, you know, how the, back in the day people would kill the barrows brothers with the barrow sets, like back when the barrow sets were the best armors and stuff. Yeah. And they would yeah, do that with time. shadow, and they go to Rise of the Six, and it would, like it's a team of six on six with all shadow versus all shadow would be pretty cool. Yeah, you you can't really tell who's who, but that'd be fun. That would be. And then. I think that's about it for the year. I mean, we still have the uh, the December updates coming up. Yep, Dominion Tower. Which I'm really excited about. Should be cool. I hope there's not many. I know there's going to be a trim requirement for sure. There's got to be a trim requirement because they made basically Dominion Tower comp because of that task set. So I'm expecting trim requirements, which I'm hoping it's not too many just because I don't want to spend so much time on it. I want to work towards Slayer, especially with the Slayer XP weekend coming out soon. So Don't worry. It's going to only be like 5,000 boss kills. <laughs> Yeah, only. I only have 1,200 at the moment, so I'm hoping not, not too many. I think it's 1,800. It's going to be kill five nomads at once. <laughs> Which isn't that bad with the OC, but yeah. I'd still yeah, it's going to be probably pretty easy. I'd still be panicking. <laughs> Interesting story. Um, You know when those desert tasks came out? Right. Yeah. And you had to complete every single Dominion Tower reward to yep. uh, for the elite task. I think the worst part about, you know, all of the completion escape requirements in terms of RNG, because I really personally hate the RNG completion escape requirements. Right. Um, it took me about two days of camping Dominion Tower, and this is like six hours a day, to get that massive bomb. Like, wow. it was just so really? rare. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's great. I, th I think I had all the bombs, like, before I even knew about the requirement, like, before I was even going for comp. No, I had the 500 kills well done, and I was still just doing Dominion Tower just to get that, <laughs> that bomb. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. 
But I mean, I know there's going to be a necklace that comes out or is updated or something where it actually increases your accuracy. Yeah, that's that sounds definitely. amazing. Yeah. So, who knows? That might be like the new go-to necklace. Right. I think it'd also be cool doing like group Dominion Tower with up to five people. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. And that's really fast boss kills. That'll be yeah, awesome. That's a rumble mode, right? Uh, what? That's the yeah, rumble. rumble. Yeah, rumble. Which we don't really know too much about yet, but that'll be fun. Is there anything yeah. else coming out cool in December, or is it pretty much just, um, just those? Weekends? There's all the like the yeah weekends and stuff. Yeah. So did you guys decide on double drops or just increased chance of drops? I think it was increase. It's, I think it's increased chance of drops. I don't think it's double. Drops. Yeah, it's like I know that the, you can like for charms in general, you get one more charm each drop. So like right. if they drop three, you'd get four instead. Yeah, for sure. And then fifty percent bonus uh, Slayer experience. I know that. So like, I think it caters more towards Slayer from what I've been seeing. Yeah, that's I'm happy about. That. I mean, that's it's, fine, but I'm fine. Same, same. So are you guys going to be doing Slayer for the weekend then? Absolutely. Probably will. Just work on my series or something. My goal is to get one twenty by the end of the year. So I have what I guess like twenty something days. How much experience are you off? Like sixteen mil, fifteen mil. I have like eighty seven point five. All right, just channel your inner Monkle Zonky, and you'll get it done. I I, just, I gotta I gotta channel it. I gotta channel. I mean, with the with the bonus XP weekend, that well not bonus XP weekend, but the double Slayer XP, I should be able to manage it. Hopefully, I'm just gonna know life a little bit. So, am yeah. I the only one who's gonna be PBMing then? Probably. I think my my goal Probably. is gonna be Cal Fight King. Oh, I don't remember what the Cal Fight King like update would be for that. I I believe it was like they just increased the uh, drop rate of the like the Onyx bolts and stuff like that. From yeah. what I've read. Oh my goodness! I love so how it's the... not like extra dry guards or anything. Hopefully less sharks. Yeah. I love how the biggest beams that you can get at Bandos are War Priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And effigies. I just got War Priest Gauntlet. It's like it has this humongous beam. It's oh, <laughs> that's really disappointing. But whatever. All right. So I I think that about does it for the podcast. I was trying to keep this under an hour and a half, and we are at that at the moment. So. Yes. Sweet. You guys want to just end off with, you know. What you're looking forward to next year? Or? Yeah, I, I guess I'll start off with I'm just looking forward to, I guess, the whole second part of Power to the Players with this whole Rune Labs thing. I'm hoping to have a series where I, I shine light on some of the really good ideas that people have and not just so that like the YouTubers and Twitch streamers can put in a thing and have it get like a thousand likes because they're famous. You know, I'd, I'd rather everyone be heard and I'm, I'm looking forward to pushing that all out. So. Yeah, that Rune Lab is gonna be really cool. I'm looking forward to the uh, the next world event thing with that whole behemoth thing that I saw in the uh, the next 2015 content thing. So I'm excited for the year ahead. I mean, obviously it's gonna be another good year. Hopefully I'll still be able to contribute to the community in some kind of way. But yeah, that's gonna be gonna be really really cool. I'm mostly looking forward to smithing and hopefully construction reworks if that comes out next year. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Yeah, I'm with Monkle Zonky on that one. <laughs> also, my yak disappeared. So. Rip. Can we get that yak disappearing glitch fixed? That would be really I'd awesome. I'd like that to get fixed as well, yes. <laughs> I would really like that. But um, Anyway, that's about going to do it for the podcast. Thank you guys for joining me. You're welcome. And uh, yep. yeah, looking forward to an awesome next year. Farewell. Later. Bye.